Hello and welcome again to Terrain Gospel Ministries. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today. I'm Terry LaSalle and I would just uh, like to continue on today in this series of Seducing Spirits and Doctrines of Demons to really reveal and expose the lies and heresies and the doctrines of demons that have really crept into denominations and has lured many people away. We're living in those days and uh, it's <clears throat> but on my heart to really expose these things. Just a couple of statements again that I would like to say. This is in no way or ways bashing Catholics or any people in any denomination that is mentioned in this series. This is not about bashing people. It's about loving people enough to tell them the truth about the areas that they're in and to expose and reveal the very roots of these things and how they're being misled. So that's the, the whole purpose of this that I would like to, to mention. And also to mention that this is not any, in any ways an exhaustive expose of all of the f factors that are there. And I recently received a comment on my last video to sort of reveal what all of the various commentators have said and he disagreed with me and, and that's entirely wonderful. You can disagree all you want to and all, but as I said, this is not an exhaustive um, uh, uh, video. It's not meant to be. It's just to reveal what I've learned in the brief time that we have in that hourglass, which is likely going to run out again today. Let's just carry on here. The uh, last one I talked about in 4C was about papal supremacy, the supremacy of the Pope, and how they have deemed themselves to be successors of Peter, therefore made infallible by Jesus, and they've claimed that themselves, and every Pope down through the line has been a successor to Peter, and consequently then infallible when he speaks what they call ex cathedra, or from the throne, the chair of St. Peter. And so they, excuse me, have deemed themselves to be the absolute authority. The Catholic Church is, and I call that hijack tool number one. You make yourself the authority, you crush any opposition against that, and you put yourselves in a position of supreme authority. Ayatollah type authority. I call this hijack number two because they've carried on and they've deemed themselves to be the supreme authority of all Christian doctrine. All Christian doctrine. They deem themselves to be the only ones to be able to interpret the scriptures, the only ones to have the authority on Christian doctrine, which they claim Catholicism is Christian and the only way to be Christian. And they've done that themselves. Let's look. The Latin Vulgate is... Um, the Bible that they had, uh, it's the Bible that they had translated into Latin. Uh, it was started or commissioned in 382 by a Pope, Dam Damasus the, the first, or Damasus the first, and he commissioned a man called Jerome to write this, or to basically write this Bible, to translate this Bible into Latin, the the language of Rome at the time, and continued on in Latin even into this day. It is still available, and uh, they uh, deemed it to be official. He uh, produced that, and it was very uh, a way to control the people because they took this Catholicism and this Bible into various other lands, non-Latin speaking lands, and told the common people that if you don't understand Latin, well, too bad, this Bible is written in Latin, and so basically we will tell you what's in the Bible. That's what they did. And they crushed any opposition to it. They crushed any rebellion against it. In fact, they persuaded anyone from actually learning and reading what was in the Bible. And I will challenge any Catholic today to please contact me and tell me that you have been instructed by your church, by your priest, to actually read the Bible. I believe you have not been, because they are afraid you will learn that the Bible will reveal that what they've been telling you is not the truth that's in the Bible. Please contact me, and I'd love to help you get a Bible yourself, and read it for yourself, and realize that what they've been telling you is not true. 
in most all the areas that we're going to mention in these next couple of videos. So they had the Latin Vulgate and they said that they were the only ones to interpret it, the only ones to reveal what, and they made themselves the sole teaching authority of that scripture. Um, they have what they call or they deem a three-legged stool of authority. This authority is like a three-legged stool that they have. And they, <clears throat> the three legs of this unholy stool is holy scripture, oral tradition, and then what they call the magisterium, which is the infallible teaching authority of, guess who, the Pope. So let's look at these three briefly as we go along. The first unholy leg of this stool is what they say is holy scripture. Now they say, quote, the written Bible, including the teachings of Christ, is classified by them, classified as the infallible word of God. However, quote, there are things lacking. They have put themselves in a position to classify the written Bible, including the teachings of Jesus Christ, as classified as the infallible Word of God. However, there are things lacking. Mind you, Matthew 5.48 says, Your Father in heaven is perfect. If our Father in heaven is per perfect, if God the Father is, in perfect, is perfect, and He submitted to us and gave us a Bible so that we could know the Holy Word of God, I don't think He would leave anything lacking in it myself. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Psalm 19 and 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More scriptures. Proverb 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. I would think if it says it's pure, then there's nothing lacking in it. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. 1 Peter 1.25. But the word of the Lord endures forever. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and God became flesh and dwelt among us. And yet they say that there was something lacking in that Word, which was God. So they're saying there's something lacking in God. Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing has changed. The Word is still perfect and pure. Nothing lacking. John 17 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Not classified as truth. Your word is truth. But the Catholic Church has decided that they have taken the position of classifying the Bible as truth or not, and therefore claiming that there are some things lacking. And this is how they have built upon their hijack tool to now take over and deem that they are the infallible teachers and interpreters of the Bible, and the only sole interpreters of the Bible. Let's look at unholy leg number two. They call it oral tradition. And they claim or say that oral tradition supplies what is lacking in written tradition, which are the scriptures, and thus, and thus is an authority alongside of the written Bible. So what they claim to be as oral tradition is, a, is an absolute authority paralleling right alongside the Bible. Both of them have equal power, equal value, because there's something lacking in the written Bible. Let's look at a few more scriptures here, and then we'll look at more of what the Catholic Church says. 2 Samuel 22, 31, and Psalm 18 and 30 says this, As for God, His way is perfect. I don't see lacking in that. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust Him. Psalm 12 and 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Psalm 19 and 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, 
enlightening the eyes. Psalm 119, 89, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your word is very pure. Therefore, your servant loves it. The entirety of your word is truth, not classified as truth, truth, and nothing lacking. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. <clears throat> Quote from the Catholic Church, Oral tradition is the teachings of Christ that were orally communicated to his apostles, who in turn orally communicated those teachings to their successors, the, guess who, Catholic popes and bishops. Sacred oral tradition makes up what is lacking in the Bible. Only these Roman Catholic popes can correctly interpret both scripture and sacred tradition. And because sacred tradition is ongoing, Roman Catholic theology is constantly evolving. Thus, if we want to hear God's voice today, we must listen to the Roman Catholic Church. 2 Peter 1 and 20 says this, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Any prophecy of Scripture is of no private interpretation. It's not of Catholic interpretation. It's not of Protestant interpretation. It's of interpretation and revelation given by the Holy Spirit to the individual, but not by any man's idea of it. Mind you, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, you can find this online, that's where I found it. Catechism of the Catholic Church says, it is not, quote, it is not from sacred scripture alone that the Roman Catholic Church draws her certainty about everything which has been revealed. But sacred tradition transmits in its full purity God's word which was entrusted to the apostles. I'm going to question that just with the business of purity as we have just in the last video heard a, a tiny sampling of all of the popes and all of their wickedness and evil and adultery and homosexuality and murder and vice in their lives, totally immoral, written in history. And yet these men have the purity to interpret oral tradition and the Bible and saying that they, it is entrusted only to them? Consequently, all matters of faith and practice are determined by the Roman Catholic Church's interpretation and understanding of the Scripture and the sacred traditions. <clears throat> and here's how they hijack things, because they have deemed themselves to be authority. No one can challenge that authority because of the retribution of excommunication or death by being burned at the stake, which they did many times in history. They claim this. They have the authority to add further revelation that is additional to the scripture, but not contrary to it. Really? In the past, they have used this power to advocate such doctrines as the Immaculate Conception of Mary, the Bodily Assumption of Mary, and the Infallibility of the Pope, all of which are, is heresy. Mary was not immaculate. She was not ever virgin, ever. She had children. She had to be not a virgin to have children. They said that she was born without sin. That is not true according to the Bible. Not the Catholic Church, but according to the Bible. And she was never assumed into heaven. She did not ascend into heaven. She did not translate into heaven bodily form like they claim. And the Pope obviously is not fallible, is not infallible. He's very fallible. He's a man. But the Catholic Church has used this power that they have now seized and had control over to their loyal subjects to tell them, we can now change what the Scripture says. We can now do what the Scripture does. We can now uh, change what the Scripture says. They say we can do it. That and, 
we can add this, we can get further revelation that is in addition to the scripture, but not contrary to it. Well, you show me anywhere in the Bible, please, please contact me and show me chapter and verse where Mary was sinless, where Mary was uh, uh, ever virgin, where Mary was assumed into heaven. Please show me that. You can't because it is contrary to the scripture, but the Catholic Church in their assumed, seized authority and power say that it was. Deuteronomy 4 and 2 gives a warning. You shall not add to the word <coughs> which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. And the real warning comes in Revelation chapter 22. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. You can't add in something as contrary to the scripture as Mary being infallible, as we're going to see about this a little further on when we talk in the next video that talks about the treasury of merit. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of his prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. However, the Catholic Church, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church states, Scripture and tradition are importantly bound closely together and communicate one with the other. For both of them, flowing out of the same wellspring, come together in some fashion to form one thing and move toward the same goal. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Let's just read that again. Scripture and tradition are importantly bound closely together and communicate one with the other. For both of them, flowing out of the same wellspring, come together in some fashion to form one thing and move toward the same goal. Thus, Scripture and tradition together make up authoritative divine revelation for the Catholic Church. End of quote. However, this divine revelation must be officially interpreted by, guess who? The office of the magisterium, which is a.k.a. the Pope. The Pope. Let's just look at a few things here that some of these popes have said, and I, we're just going to pick one of them. This man is called Pope Innocent. Interesting title for a man who was not very innocent, if you read some of his history. <coughs> he wrote this, quote, Thus, as the moon receives its light from the sun, so the royal power, state, derives from the pontifical authority the splendor of its dignity. The state of the world will be restored by our diligence and care for the pontifical authority and the royal power fully suffice for this purpose. And that was back somewhere about the, 12, the year 1200. So just like the moon receives its light from the sun, the pontifical authority receives its revelation from God himself and they're going to put the world in a better state because they can, so they say. Let's look at this, what the scripture says about stuff like this. Acts chapter 20, we read it last video. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things. We just listened to them. Popes, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Paul warned the men here, Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. One more scripture. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 before we move on to this magisterium, <clears throat> the Pope's infallible teaching authority. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, oral tradition, tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Verse 4 says, Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you 
with pervasive, persuasive words. Persuasive words. <clears throat> I believe the Catholic Church has deceived many, millions, with these persuasive words. Let's look at unholy leg number three of this unholy stool, which they claim makes themselves the supreme authority. One was Holy Scripture. They deem it, they classify it as infallible, but it has a few things lacking. Unholy leg number two, <clears throat> they claim that oral tradition is right alongside and it has to be trusted uh, as well because it's the oral tradition and the teachings that was passed on word of mouth down from Peter right through to this present day Pope Francis, which we are going to talk about in detail in another video or two. Equally as infallible because it is interpreted by the Pope as the actual scriptures, because it fills in all the things that are lacking in the actual Bible itself. And now this unholy leg number three, it all comes down to now the magisterium, which is the infallible teaching of the Pope. He's the one who interprets the Bible. He's the one who has given the God-given ability to interpret all this oral tradition and to claim it to be valid and or authoritative for the people and force the people to believe it. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says this, <clears throat> The task of giving an authentic interpretation of the Word of God, whether in, in, whether in its written form or in the form of tradition, has been entrusted to the living teaching office of the Church alone. Its authority in this matter is exercised in the name of Jesus Christ. This means that the task of interpretation has been entrusted to the bishops in communion with the successor of Peter, the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. End of quote. That's the statement given in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. <clears throat> the magisterium of the Catholic Church is the Church's authority or office to give authentic interpretation of the Word of God and to exercise supreme, Ayatollah type, supreme authority as leaders over the entire church and as the priesthood that administers grace through its seven sacraments. Remember there were seven sacraments in Mithraism at the very start in one of the early videos that I did when they ate the actual flesh and actual blood of the sacrifice. It just happened to have seven sacraments in it as well. Coincidence. Maybe not. So let's look at this. The Catholic Church teaches that the scriptures are authoritative but incomplete. God left a few things out just so the Catholic Church can take up the position and of him and uh, further interpret it. They say that he left a few things out. It was incomplete because God has more to say to humanity. This is the Catholic Church speaking. But God has more to say to humanity than that which is contained in the Bible. I thought we just read back here, your word is complete. It's pure. The entirety of your word is truth. The statutes of the Lord are right. But they say, no, it's, um, it's incomplete. God has more to say to humanity than that which is contained in the Bible. And he will only say it through the Catholic Church because it alone is God's only continuing voice upon the earth and the Bible, like everything else, is under its supreme authority. So as they've climbed up onto their little stool and now are proclaiming, trumpeting out to the world, we are the only authority because God has given us this authority and God has left a few things out, but he's given us the sole ability to interpret what the Bible says. And we will tell you what the Bible says. Never mind reading the Bible. It's really infallible. It, it, it's really, it's infallible, but it's really not complete anyway. And so God, as things are progressing and evolving, 
we know we're up to speed on that, so we will tell you. That's exactly what this says. I'll read it again for you. The Catholic Church teaches that the Scriptures are authoritative, but incomplete. Because God has more to say to humanity than that which is contained in the Bible, and He will only say it through the Catholic Church, because it alone is God's only continuing voice upon the earth. And the Bible, like everything else, is under its supreme authority. Therefore, according to the Roman Catholic Church, the final standard of truth is not the Bible, but rather the Pope's infallible interpretation of it, the magisterium. Thus, the infallible standard of truth is the Catholic Church itself. Not the Bible, but the Church itself. Because the voice of the Catholic Church is the voice of Jesus Christ. This is heresy. <clears throat> and he has made it the sole custodian, guardian, teacher, interpreter, and preserver of the Bible and its sacred tradition. Last time I checked, that position was filled by the Holy Spirit. Not the Catholic Church, not the Methodist Church, not the Pentecostal Church, not the Baptist Church. No church, but the Holy Spirit. Two men that He saves, that He gives His Spirit to, and He starts to reveal the Bible to. But this job is taken by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> not the Pope or the Catholic Church. Again, the voice of the Catholic Church is the voice of Jesus Christ. But he has made it the soul, and he has made it, the church, the soul, the Catholic Church, the sole custodian, guardian, teacher, interpreter, and preserver of the Bible and sacred tradition. This fully authorizes the Catholic Church to supplement Scripture with additional teachings and traditions. In this way, the Roman Catholic Church places itself as supreme spiritual authority and its papal interpretations must be accepted without any question. What do you think? I'm just going to wrap this up by reading Scripture today. And there's a chance that will run out, but we shouldn't get too far down the road past that sand running out. Matthew 15 Verses 3 to 9 says, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God because of your tradition? Thus you have made the commandment of the God of no effect, <clears throat> excuse me, by your tradition. Hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near me, draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, the imaginations of men. That's what they do. And they teach these things as doctrines, these imaginations of men that they conjure up in their mind, or maybe they are seducing spirits, and doctrines of demons that are influencing them. And they put into place all of these heresies. Mary, her infallibility. We're going to read more about that a little later on in the Treasury of Merit. These apparitions, as we read or heard about in the other videos. They claim all these to be authentic, pure, true, and given by God. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Again, the warning from Revelation. For I testify to anyone, to everyone, that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. It's a dangerous thing to add something to the Bible to make it fit your doctrine and your teaching. We're going to read about how they did that with this treasury of merit and indulgences to put money into the coffers of the Catholic Church. And we just read about, we just listened to that last video about Pope John the 23rd who the treasury was empty because the previous pope gave all the money away to his family. He was making him wealthy for after he retired or died or whatever out of the papacy. So John 23rd immediately went to work and he made a list 
of every sin in the kingdom, in Christendom, and all these wealthy cats, and he put a price on the sin. Murder, whatever the, the, the currency was at the time, we'll call it, we'll call it dollars. Murder, thousand bucks. Homosexuality, 500 bucks. Adultery, 500 bucks. $100 for this, $100 for that, $200 for that. And he posted this everywhere. And anyone who were committing these sins could just go and pay the Pope that money. He would absolve them of their sins. He would absolve them of their sins. And they would be fine. Go back to sin again. All they, did, they had lots of money. The wealthy Catholics sinned a lot. So they could just pay off. And, that, and that's how the Pope built up the coffers of the Catholic Church. That's history. That's what he did. And said that he could do that. No problem. Well, I'm afraid that if you add to the words of this Bible, which says that you can't do that, um, God's going to add to you the plagues that are written in the Bible. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life. That's pretty serious. Because if you go on and read, all those people whose names are not found in the book of life are cast into the lake of fire. No purgatory. We're going to talk about that in the next video as well. From the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. <clears throat> I just want to close here with um, reading just a lengthier portion of scripture. And it's amazing how these popes and the priests and the bishops and the cardinals and the leadership of the Catholic Church all seem to parallel the Pharisees of Jesus' day. All seem to parallel the Pharisees of the Jesus' day. And I could just read Matthew 23. And pretty much points it out, and I want you to listen to this and see if you can see a parallel between what we just described, that what they do, what they've done, what we've covered to date, and see if it lines up to what Jesus told the Pharisees about what he called them and what they were doing as he called them out. Matthew 23. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, the, Pharise the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Let me just uh, parallel that and say, the popes and the bishops and the cardinals and the priests, they sit in Peter's seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to do, observe. Whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do. If it's written in the Bible, and they tell you to do it, do it. That's what he says. If it's the Word of God, you need to do it. And if they tell you to do it, do it. But if it's not in the Word of God, don't do it. If it's part of their catechism that's not in the Bible, don't do it. But they do not do according to their works. For they say and do not do. You know that Pope John XXIII? He was a warmonger. And he was also a, a heathen. He was called the heretic's heretic. He was taking all sorts of money in and absolving people of their sin, and yet he was living a very sinful heathen life as a pope. Don't do according to their works, for they say and they do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the borders of their garments. Modern day vernacular, they wear their robes, they have their miters, their staff, their colors. They love to be seen in public. They love the best places at the feasts, and the best seats in the synagogues, greeting in the market, greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi, or Father, Father, or Vicar of Christ, or Bishop of Rome, or many of those other puff-up titles that we read, that we heard in the last video. But you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. And you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father. Do not call anyone on earth your father. 
except your biological dad, which is our modern day English. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father who is in heaven. Now, I don't see Pope Francis in heaven, ever, but I don't see him in heaven today, or cardinals, or bishops, or the priest at the church down the, downtown here. They're not in heaven, they're on earth. So don't call them your father. He says, because you have one who is your father who is in heaven. Jesus' words. Whom we will stand before at the judgment seat of Christ. And do not be called teachers. For one is your teacher, the Christ. He has supreme authority over the word of God. He is the word of God. No pope, no man has supreme authority over the word of God. Jesus. But he who is the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. I don't think sitting on the throne in Rome and proclaiming yourself to be the supreme authority, the Ayatollah Vaticanus, is humbling yourself very well. The Bible says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. And then Jesus goes on to talk about this. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, play actors is what hypocrite means. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe to you, popes and bishops. Hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense, make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. One convert is what that word means. And when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you yourselves are. Woe to you, blind guides who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever sw swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold of the temple that sanctify, or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and by all things on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And he who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you! Woe means impending doom. Judgment is coming upon you. Woe is you. Not W-O-A-H, like the horse, woe. Or we use that, woe, look at that. Not that. Woe, impending doom. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. I don't read a lot of what we read about and heard about about those popes. And that book that I just read from is this book here, A Woman Rides the Beast. We read about Pope Innocent, but in it is, is a documentation of much history of the Catholic Church, many of their wars. I don't see a lot of justice and mercy and faith in where these popes who have been deposed, chased out of the country because of their wickedness, a few years later comes back because they've been able to, to gain the support of some warlord and comes back with an army with swords and back into Rome and murder in a bloodbath. All of those that oppose them the last time and the Pope throw him out and then take their rightful seat. I don't see a lot of mercy there or faith. I don't see a lot of succession of Peter there. But they're good at prayers and mitres and robes and staff. 
speaking ex cathedra. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you pay the tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee. First cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which appear, indeed, appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. If these popes say that they are in direct succession of all of the line of Peter, and they are really just like the other popes that were before them, then those popes were murderers and adulterers, adulterers illegitimate children put there by prostitutes. That's a nice genealogy. Not. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. He calls them serpents, brood of vipers. That would be an interesting title. Cardinal Snake, Cardinal Viper. How can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Yes, they have. And some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city or burn at the stake at the town square for not denouncing Roman Catholicism, for not accepting it as the sole authority of God on earth, that the Pope being the vicar of Christ, the voice of Christ, God himself on earth, and men have been burned at the stake because they will not bow to that heresy. Many of them, it's in history. That on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. That was what Jesus said about the Pharisees. That's what they were like. And I see a very striking parallel between the Pharisees and what we have today in Rome and the tradition down through time the cover-ups, the murders, the payoffs. Right now with the whole swaying away of the Bible, this very modern day Pope, which we'll look at in much more detail after this, is very Marxist, very pro, very anti-Bible, quite frankly, very pro everything that is against the Bible, very left-wing, very similar to these Pharisees. Do what I say, but not as I do. Promoting things that are not biblical. Living that's not biblical. We'll talk about him a little down the road as we wrap this up. But I just want to wrap this up right now. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you're a Roman Catholic and you've just grown up that way, followed along that way, as a child, what else did you know? And you went along that way, but something is tugging at you now in your heart. You need to run and not walk away from this.
cut every string, every Catholic string that's attached to you. And your insides will scream, ah, oh, where am I going to go? Ah, oh, they'll excommunicate me. Hopefully, yes, they will. And you'll be set free. Get a Bible. Contact me. I'll send you one. Really, I will. Lorraine and I have sent thousands of dollars worth of Bibles out over the past 20 years of life here. So you can learn for yourself. You don't need to go to church if that's the only church that you've ever been at. You need to get saved. Turn to Jesus Christ. He is your Lord and Savior. He is the authority. He loves you. He is not going to tell you a lie. He did not leave anything out of that Bible. He tells you the way to salvation. We're going to learn in the next video that the Catholic Church does not guarantee you salvation. They're empty promises. They're a parachute full of Kleenex. That when you pull that ripcord on the way down, you're just going to speed up when you hit. Please be free. Please be free. Please flee. Turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. Simple. Simple. Turn to Jesus Christ. Ask Him for salvation. Ask Him for forgiveness and to reveal this to you. If that's tugging at your heart right now, that's the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. And that's the grip of the devil holding you back and causing this turmoil within you. Turn away from that turmoil and turn towards the one that's pulling you, which is Jesus Christ. In the next part, 4E, we're going to talk about, as I mentioned, their version of salvation. It's empty. It doesn't, you don't get saved. We'll look at purgatory, their fabricated purgatory to keep the money flowing. And the treasury of merit, which is another total fabrication that does not exist. The selling or the granting of indulgences. And then they're praying to patron saints, how that is a pagan root and a pagan origin. If we get that far, depending on, well, that hourglass doesn't seem to matter much. It's more of just <laughs> something to have in all these videos. God bless you. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Please turn to Christ. Please be saved. Please be free from this wretched denomination that keeps you captive. God bless you.